Welcome to Creaky Knees Club. I'm Liz. Join us on our adventure to Seoul, Korea. It's the second day of our trip to Korea and we're going to spend it at the War Memorial Museum of Korea. We're staying at Dragon Hill Lodge, which is a military resort for military members active and retired and their guests. Dragon Hill Lodge is only a quick 10 minute walk to the museum. We use two apps to get around, Neighbor Map and Kakao app, K-A-K-A-O app. Google Map does not work very well here in Korea. The museum is free and it's open from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's closed on Mondays. The museum is also built on the former grounds of the Army headquarters. All of the guides I read recommended two to three hours to explore the museum but we spent a total of five hours here, just walking the grounds and exploring the inside. The size and scope rivals our Smithsonian museums here in the U.S. Um, this is a great place to visit if you enjoy history or war memorabilia or just want to learn more about the struggles of the Korean people. This ship is a reproduction, but you can see here they have uh, shown in red where the original ship took on artillery fire.
Here the entrance courtyard of the museum honors all of those countries who sent aid. The Korean Peninsula was split into two after World War II, with democratic South Korea working to rebuild its society post-Japanese rule, communist North Korea being influenced by Soviet Union and China eventually invaded. On June 25, 1950, 75,000 North Korean soldiers crossed the 38th parallel into South Korea, intending to impose communism on its people. This took South Korea by surprise. The museum gives a history of Korea starting in the prehistoric period through the Han Dynasty, the Joseon period, Japanese imperialism, the Korean Empire, to the country's liberation and independence from Japan. Some of this weaponry and the uniforms might be a little familiar to you if you enjoy K-dramas.
Okay, this was one of my favorite things in the museum. Um, this art piece is made of 1300 ID tags shaped into a teardrop and this was made in remembrance of Korean and UN troops who lost their lives. The Memorial Hall here honors Korea's fallen heroes. It's a pretty solemn, um, somber, and overwhelming space to be in, just thinking about the human cost of war. This museum has stairs as well as elevators, so it is accessible to those needing to use mobility devices. There are some areas that you won't be able to access, but most of it you can. If you visited this museum before, the War Memorial of Korea, let us know your thoughts below. We would recommend this for anyone wanting to get to know a little bit more about the history of this beautiful country. Okay, notice here how the crosswalk has arrows showing you which side to walk on when you're crossing the street. This helps to increase the flow of traffic and make things run a little smoother. It's got like a sign on it that says fried chicken. Leaving the museum, we decided to go grab a bite to eat. It was already mid-afternoon by this time. So um, about a block, a block and a half away, there's a burger place we saw. It's called Hangang Burger, and they have American-style hamburgers, uh, chili cheese fries, onion rings, that kind of thing. The food here was really good. I, I have no complaints about any of the food um, in Korea. Hooray for chili burgers. I like the name of this coffee shop. Most of the places, I, I think the names are pretty cute and clever. I had the chicken burger. This was like Korean fried chicken. It was absolutely delicious. Too much food, couldn't finish it. And once we were done, we just walked around a little bit more, and then I had to call it quits for the day. I was feeling jet-lagged and had to go back to the hotel. So that's our day.